In the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. People are born, they live, they suffer, and die. Rarely of natural causes. Black Lab Games, the studio behind Battlestar Galactica Deadlock, has another hit on its hands with Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector. While it's in danger of being overlooked amid a recent flood of games using the Warhammer 40k setting, Battle Sector brings the new era of the 40k tabletop game to PCs like a thunder hammer to the head of a hive tyrant. The momentum-based tactical system and broad customizability of the forces you lead, combined with randomization in the mission setups, gives you a fun campaign with a tasty side dish of multiplayer skirmish. The brooding melodrama of the Warhammer 40k universe is on full display in Battle Sector. The beautiful yet burdened Blood Angels space marines are devastated following the invasion of their home worlds by the ravening swarm of the Tyranids, a hive mind of space monsters that exist only to eat and grow. However, the Blood Angels have now been reinforced by a true son of the Emperor, Rupert Gilliman, and an army of newly made Primaris Marines, which are just like normal space marines, but bigger. As you might expect, nay, demand, from a space marine adventure, there are lots of scenery-chewing voice performances and plenty of melodramatic inter-character conflict to enjoy. It all delights in dialogue and flavor text that really catches the tone of 40k, backed up by gothic choirs, chattering assault cannons, and sizzling plasma. The core of the synaptic node waits for us here. Plus, it has a photo mode. Over a 20-mission single-player campaign, you lead Sergeant Carleon, his Blood Angels, and some Sister of Battle allies against the Tyranids. To their credit, no two missions are exactly alike, each presenting some new objective or terrain to set it apart from the others. Early fights see you tearing through Tyranids on desolate salt flats, while later battles move to narrow mountain passes and massive Gothic industrial facilities. As you unlock new units, you're able to put points into your commander's skill trees, but you've got no hope of unlocking them all in a single playthrough. Instead, you get to specialize your army, choosing which units you'll buff up with new skills and upgraded stats. In my roughly 30 hours with Battle Sector, I've built two armies, one designed as an infantry gun line that buffs up its members and mows down enemies as they approach, then has heroes sweep in to melee the survivors to mulch. The other is led by an armored sledgehammer, using flamethrower-equipped Furioso Dreadnoughts to burn out the chaff, and Predator tanks to smash the big bugs before they can even react. Both builds have a different feel, but are still effective ways to play through the campaign, which speaks well to its potential for replays, even though you can only play as Space Marines. Skirmish is a bit more bare bones. Fights are on mirrored maps with no real objectives other than a deathmatch but it's fun enough to think up weird lists of units to surprise others with. Playing as the Tyranids after the shooting and maneuvering campaign as the Blood Angels is a treat because they force you to focus on swarm tactics and high-value centerpiece monsters to win. The only real limitation is the unit variety, about 13 units per side, which left me wanting more. The basic turn-to-turn -turn tactics of Battle Sector are richly simulated with each unit having a number of attacks each round, each with its own chance to hit and damage roll. It's pretty satisfying to see a unit of Primaris aggressors roll out 120 separate attacks in a turn, scything through model after model of Tyranids. As your units mow down the enemy, they rack up points in their momentum bar, which brings a high skill, high reward factor to Battle Sector's combat. Blood Angels generate momentum by being in the thick of the fight, while Tyranids get it for killing, but both sides use it the same ways. A full momentum bar lets a unit either take an extra action that round, or use a buffed up version of one of their abilities, like a super strength heal or a meteoric aerial charge. It's a little icing on the cake during combat, a bit of a mini game to gun for as you maximize your favorite units and ensure they get the choicest kills so they can get extra attacks. Most of the tactical thinking is in positioning your units at their optimal range, which is conveniently highlighted for you when you mouse over a weapon. As you maneuver, you set your unit's facings and overwatch angles, 
so they can fire during the enemy turn. The melee rules are the most complex thing to figure out, because they're highly dependent on what weapons each side is using and where they're facing. It might take you some trial and error before you understand when your units will or won't get free attacks with pistol weapons against an onrushing horde, or avoid those same kinds of attacks from the enemy, or melee attack without a counterattack in return. The tutorials aren't as clear as they could be when it comes to explaining that system. Serving up big, swirling battlefields with 20 or more units per side, Warhammer 40,000 Battle Sector beats the pants off of other recent 40k games, making a run at skirmish wargame greatness. While it's limited in places, and the interface can struggle, the tactical combat is well worth the time it takes to learn, and the momentum system rewards your strategic prowess with more capacity to dish out pain. From the diverse campaign missions to the straightforward skirmishes, I not only recommend Battle Sector, but hope that it does well enough to warrant the addition of many new factions in DLC and expansions. For more Warhammer, check out our reviews of Warhammer Age of Sigmar, Stormground, and Necromunda Hired Gun. And for everything else, stick with IGN. It will take the servitors months to clean all of this up. I fear your mighty salt fort may not be habitable for some time, Lieutenant. 